Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering 5th Grade Math. Here in this lesson we're going to talk about the topic of order of operations. So as we go through this lesson, we'll be working examples step by step to teach you the concepts of what we call order of operations in math. And then we'll also be going on through all of the other lessons in this batch in the series here, taking every single concept step by step. So let's follow on through here. The one thing I want to make sure and let you know is that after you finish uh, watching this lesson and you understand everything, I want you to work all of these problems on a separate sheet of paper yourself. And then I would like you to get the workbook, uh, the worksheets out, and work all of those problems. When you're confident that you understand everything and you're doing well, then you can move on to the next topic. That's the way to succeed in math. So we have this concept called the order of operations. What it basically means is up till now you really have gotten good at adding and subtracting numbers and multiplying and dividing numbers. We've also done quite a bit of work with fractions. But it turns out that there's a specific order that we are supposed to do adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing when we have a bigger problem. So let me tell you what that order is. I'll just write it on the board and then you'll have it here. And then as we work a lot of problems, you'll see very quickly that it's very, very simple. So this whole concept is, concept is called the order of operations. And basically, as I said before, it just tells you how you should solve your problems, what order you should solve your problems. So, um, number one, the number one thing you do when you're solving a problem that involves you know, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, uh, is we have the concept of parentheses in math. So I'll get to that a little bit later. We'll talk about it when we do our problems. But number one, you want to always do inside whatever is inside the parentheses. first. doesn't matter what else is happening in your problem. If you see any parentheses in your problem, you have to do what's inside of those guys first. Number two, the next thing in the order is you want to do multiplication and division. And when I, uh, when I say do multiplication and division, I'm talking about doing it left to right. What this means is if you have 2 times 2 divided by 6 times 5, then you're doing multiplication and division as you read left to right across the page. All right. And then the last thing is, and there's only three rules, so this is the third one, the final thing you want to do is you want to do adding and subtract. You want to add and subtract left to right. All right, so that's the basic idea. Um, as you get higher and higher into math, there are a few additional rules and order of operations. We'll get to those as you get higher in math. But right now at this level, what we're trying to do is we're trying to show you uh, that sometimes you run into these things called parentheses when you're solving problems. I'm going to show you exactly what that is in just a minute. Don't worry about it. It's very simple. And also we're trying to show you the rules that you follow when you're solving these problems, when you're calculating. The number one thing you do, the very first thing you do, is you always do whatever's inside of the parentheses first. All right? After you've done that, then you do multiplication and division next, and you do it left to right, just like you read a book. And then after that, you do adding and subtracting left to right, just like you read a book. So these are the three rules. We're going to use these over and over and over again. So let's just get started by solving a real problem because, you know, a lot of times you talk about these things, but until you see it, you don't really know what I'm talking about. So let's say we have the problem 5 times 6 minus 4. And I ask you, I want you to calculate what 5 times 6 minus 4 is. So a lot of students uh, would take 5 times 6 and they would get the answer of that, and then they would subtract 4, all right? But also some other students might say, well, let me take 6 minus 4 and then multiply by 5. What is going to give me the correct answer? Well, let's follow the order of operations. You have to do it in a specific order, otherwise you get the wrong answer. So let's show you what that is. First, it says do what's inside of the parentheses first. There are no parentheses in this problem, so you don't even worry about number one. It doesn't apply. All right, number two, do multiplication and division left to right. So multiplication and division comes before adding and subtracting. That means that this multiplication here has to be done before the subtraction because we go down the order here. This is the most important, this is the next thing we do, and this is the last thing we do. So adding and subtracting basically is always going to be last in every problem you do. So since we have multiplication here, that's step 
uh, or, or uh, order number two or uh, step number two, five times six, the way we write this down is we say this is 30. Now we still have the minus four, so we just carry it along for the ride. So we see exactly what we did and your teacher will see exactly what you did. Five times six gives you 30. The minus four has not been done yet because multiplication came first. All right, and then now we look at this line and we see what do we have left to do? The only thing left is a subtraction. We've done everything else. Adding and subtracting comes last, so we go ahead and do this. So the answer here, 30 minus four is 26. And this is what you would circle on your test. This guy is the correct answer. If you put this in a calculator or a computer or doing it by hand as we've done here, 26 is the correct answer. Now, I wanna show you how a lot of students get into trouble if you don't follow order of operations. So I'm gonna change colors and I'm gonna change colors to kind of this pink color here. So let's say we have five times six minus four. The way we were supposed to do is we multiplied first, then we did the subtraction. But let's say somebody doesn't know this very well and they decide to do the subtraction first. Now this is clearly wrong because the subtraction is the very last thing we do. But let's say somebody does it. So six minus four gives you two. That comes from this. And then let's say you still chose, you used to put the five out to be multiplied as the last step. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. Five times two, the only thing left to do in the problem would be 10. So one student who did it correctly gets the answer of 26. Another student who does the answer incorrectly gets 10. So who's gonna get the right answer? Well, not the guy who did this because he did it wrong or she did it wrong. Six minus four is two and five times two is 10. But the way that you do it here is backwards of how you're supposed to do it. You always do parentheses first, then you do multiplication and division, and then you do adding and subtracting. Here we did everything out of order. So just to make sure you know this is wrong, I'm gonna put a big X through this, that is wrong. I'm not going to show you in every problem the wrong way to do it, but I wanted to show you that the order matters. If you don't do the order correctly, you're gonna get the total wrong answer and, and just not do it right. So let's go ahead and continue on here and get some more practice. We're just gonna do a lot of these things. What if I have um, 36 divided by six minus four? Again, some students might look here and say, well, I've got subtraction, I've got division, what do I do first? Well, you go to your order of operations. We check for parentheses first, there are no parentheses here, and then we do multiplication and division. Well, here's some division. So 36 minus six, I'll switch colors. 36, I should say divided by six, is gonna be six, and then we still have the minus four. So this is equal to six minus four. Now the only thing remaining to do in the problem is subtraction. That comes dead last, six minus four is two. So the answer is two. All right, so as we work these problems, I just want you to remember three things are very easy. Do parentheses first, then do multiplying and dividing, then do adding and subtracting. Your adding and subtracting should always come last. So as we uh, continue to work these problems, I want you to kind of keep that in mind because those rules are never gonna change in math. You're always gonna be using these rules. Now what if you have the problem 10 plus seven times four? Right, now here's the correct way to do it. The first thing you look and see is, do I have any parentheses in this problem? And I don't, so I don't even worry about parentheses. The next thing I do is I look, do I have any multiplication or division? Because that is the next thing in the list. And I see that I have seven times four. Now I also have an addition here, but we know that we always do addition and subtraction last, so we don't do that first. We always do the multiplication or division first. So I know it seems a little weird, but what you're gonna do is skip over here and say seven times four um, is 28. Now don't forget, you still have to add the 10 to it, so you write it just like this for your next steps, uh, 10 plus 28. And now, to do the final part of the problem, you know that 10 plus 28 is 38, and there's nothing else left to do because that addition was the last thing in the problem. So notice we followed our order of operations. First we did multiplication, we did it right here, and then we did the addition. We get an answer of 38. A lot of students will uh, get the wrong answer because they'll do this addition first, 10 plus seven is 17, right? And then they'll multiply the 17 that they got times four. That's gonna give you the wrong answer. Uh, 17 times four is not 38, all right? So you have to do it right. You do parentheses first, then multiply, divide, then addition and subtraction. And I keep saying it over and over again because it's honestly one of the most important things you can learn in math is order of operations. Now for this problem, 
we're going to introduce this idea of a parentheses. 18 divided by 2 times 6 divided by 3. Now here, if you've never seen parentheses in math before, it looks a little bit weird. Um, but the way you read parentheses in math is just in terms of the order of operations. All parentheses mean, the only reason we have parentheses is because we want to force what's inside of the parentheses to happen first. Because parentheses are always number one on the list. All right, So we can't do this multiplication that's in the middle first because we have to handle what's inside the parentheses first. So the way you handle this is you say, well, inside this parentheses is 18 divided by 2. And 18 divided by 2 is 9, so we put a 9 here. And you can kind of keep the parentheses here for now. We'll keep the multiplication for now. And inside this parentheses is 6 divided by 3, and you know that that is equal to 2. So here we have parentheses 9, parentheses 2. Since there's only one number inside of these parentheses, in this step here, we can kind of remove the parentheses. We don't really need them anymore. I'm going to leave them here for this problem. Parentheses only make sense when you have multiple things going on inside. If you do everything and you just get one number, then you can drop the parentheses. They don't even matter anymore. Okay, so we've done everything inside the parentheses, and now the only thing that we have left to do is this operation, the multiplication, because we go through the order of operations. We've done the parentheses. Now we look for addition and subtraction. We don't have any. Next, we look for multiplying and division, and we do that uh, like this. So 9 times 2 is 18. 18 is the final answer to that problem. All right, so you don't want to accidentally be doing things like 2 times 6 first, you know, or anything like that, because you want to handle what's inside this parenthesis, what's inside this parenthesis. Once you have those, then you handle the other operations. And we always do adding and subtracting before multiplying and dividing. All right, let's go on to the next problem. We're going to do quite a few of these. What if we have something like 5 times 20 minus 3 plus 8? Okay, so now the problems are getting a little bit bigger, and this looks a little bit complicated at first. If you get confused at what to do, just go back to your order of operations. First thing, check for parentheses, then multiplying and dividing, then adding and subtracting. But notice in this case that we have a parentheses here, so we know we have to do what's inside the parentheses. Now here's the catch. Whenever I showed you the order of operations, I said do the parentheses first, then do multiplication, division, then do adding and subtracting. If you're working inside of the parentheses, whatever is inside of there, you still need to follow this order. So we first look inside of the parentheses and we look for any multiplying or dividing inside of the parentheses first, and we don't see any. So in this case, we can do the subtraction first because it's inside the parentheses, and inside the parentheses, we always look for adding and sub uh, uh, multiplication and division first, and then adding and subtracting. So everything outside the parentheses that we're not able to touch right now, um, but inside of here, 20 minus 3 is 17. So we put a 17 here. That comes from that. Now the times 5 that's on the front end and the plus 8 that's on the back end, that all stays the same. Now I could put a parentheses around 17 because, you know, there was parentheses here. But once I've solved everything inside of the parentheses, um, and it's just one number left from that. I can drop the parentheses. The parentheses really only only make any sense when there's multiple things happening because you're trying to group operations. Once you've done it all, then you can just drop it. So what we have now is 5 times 17 plus 8. And I'm going to ask you, how do we solve that? Well, we've already done parentheses. That's done. So then we look for multiplying and dividing, and we do that left to right. So here we see 5 times 17. We're going to do that first. We're not going to do any plus 8 because that comes last. So what we'll have then, 5 times 17 is going to give you 85, and then we carry the plus 8 down because we have to do that in the very last step. The only thing remaining is addition, and we know adding and subtracting does come last, so 85 plus 8 is 93, and that is the final answer. You need to make sure you understand the concept of what we're doing here because a lot of students will get confused. If you don't know the order of operations, you might try to multiply 5 times 20 first. Or you might try to uh, do this something with this 3 plus an 8 first. And you can't. There's a specific way of doing it. You do inside the parentheses. Once you're zoomed inside the parentheses, you always look for multiplication and division first, then adding and subtracting inside the parentheses. Once we did that, then you bounce out of it and you go left to right, multiplying and dividing, and then left to right, adding and subtracting. 
So this whole process becomes a whole lot more comfortable to you the more and more of these things we do. So let's say we have 7 times 7 minus 3 inside of some parentheses. How do we handle this one? Okay, well, first we check for parentheses, and we see we have parentheses. Now inside of here, we only have one thing to do, 7 minus 3. There's no multiplying or dividing in here, so we don't worry about that. We just go to the subtraction. 7 minus 3 is 4. We can drop the parentheses now because we've tackled what's inside of there. The times 7 remains because we haven't done that yet. And then the very last thing that we do is 7 times 4 is 28. And that is the final answer. You know, if you want to keep parentheses around here, I mean, you can. Just to, to remind yourself that this 4 came from the parentheses, it's okay. But still, you're just going to multiply 7 times 4 at the end of the day because that is what's going to give you the final answer there. There's nothing else left to do after you've handled the parentheses in this case. All right, let's do 10 plus 10 divided by 2 divided by 5. All right, so here's a problem. First thing we do is we look for parentheses. We see that we have parentheses, so we know we have to do what's inside here first. But once we're inside of there, first we look for multiplying and dividing. We do those first, then we look for adding and subtracting. So we see that we have a division here. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And just to remind you, I'll keep the parentheses around the 5 to show you that we've handled it. The plus 10 remains, and the divided by 5 also remains. Okay? There's no adding or subtracting in here. We've done everything that we need to do. We've done the division first, so we have a 5 here. Now we go to the next step. We look at this. We've done the parentheses. The next thing we do is we look for multiplying and dividing. It's the very next step after parentheses. Well, we have addition here, but we have division over here. So we need to do this first. 5 divided by 5 is 1. We still have our plus 10 that we haven't handled yet. Okay? And the very last thing, there's nothing else to do. 10 plus 1 is 11, so um, addition and subtraction come last. Another way to think about it is the only time addition and subtraction don't come last is if they're inside parentheses, because then you have to do them first. So you just kind of have to keep an eye on, on um, the ordering, and there's only three rules at this level that you need to know. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and switch this over and do a couple more additional problems, just to give you some extra practice. What if you have 8 times 8 minus 9 times 2? How do we handle something like that? First, we look for parentheses. And we see that we don't have any parentheses, so we forget about that. Then we look for multiplying and dividing. Now, we do multiplying and dividing left to right. We do multiplying and dividing left to right. This subtraction is not going to happen until the very, very end. So just forget about trying to subtract anything. But we see that we have a multiplication here. We're going to go left to right. 8 times 8 is 64, right? 9 times 2 is 18. So we can do all this at once, and they're linked by the subtraction that has to come later. You see what I mean? So we do this to make 64. We do this to make 18 because we're reading left to right, and we're doing the multiplication or division. But the, any subtraction or anything like that that's happening, we wait till later. And the final answer, 64 minus 18, if you forget how to do that, 64, 18, you can just subtract to the side. We can borrow here, make this a 5. This, 14 minus 8 is going to give me 6. 5 minus 1 is going to give me 4. So the answer is 46. 46, just like that. So you need to do the multiplication and division first left to right. That's what we mean by left to right. We do it like this, and then we do addition and subtraction for the very last step. Now, what if we have 24 divided by 4 divided by 2 times 3? Now, here's where left to right is going to become even more important, okay? We first look for parentheses. We don't see any parentheses. So the next thing we do is look for multiplication and division, and we do it left to right, all right, left to right. So we see we have a bunch of stuff going on here. We have a division here, we have a division here, we have multiplication here. And these are all linked together. So you can't really do them all at once. So what you really should do is do them left to right. Okay, so what we have is in the first step, in the first step, we have 24 divided by 4. What does that equal? 6. Now let's just carry the divide by 2 multiplied by 3 from this. Let's just carry that to the next problem. This became a 6. Now we go left to right multiplication and division. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now we have the times 3. We'll just leave that along for the ride. 
And then finally, 3 times 3 is 9. So the answer to that problem is 9. This is what we really mean when we say multiply and divide left to right. Okay. When you look at that, you, you can do the first multiplication or division, then bring the problem down, then do the next multiplication or division, bring the problem down, then do the final multiplication or division, bring the problem down. Since we didn't have any addition or subtraction in that problem, then we didn't have to worry about it. We just did the multiplying and dividing left to right. If you start doing things out of order, then you're, you're not going to get the right answer. Now, I want to contrast that to what we had up here. We could have done this also uh, in more of a left to right kind of way. In fact, I'll do this again for you just to show you. I showed you the first time that 